みなさん、こんばんは。えー、っと、Happy Labor Day, everyone.、Uh, I have to give you some fair warning tonight. My daughter is kind of having a little bit of a bad night, so she's kind of be crying in the background a little bit. So sorry about that. Maybe、uh, you can catch some of her Japanese.、Um, I promise we're not abusing her or anything. She's just four. So,、um, anyway. Well, it's been a few weeks since we've seen each other. Sorry about that last week.、Um, I don't know what was going on with that. YouTube just said that they were like, in maintenance mode, so they weren't accepting、uh, live, ups,、uh, live streams at, at that time. So,、um, kind of, it's really distracting.、Um, yeah, so.、Uh, <laughs> okay. So. Just something my teeth. No, okay. All right, so anyway,、um, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about lodging in Japan and where you can stay if you visit there. And we're going to go over the homework and we're going to、uh, talk a little bit about verbs to kind of just recap you know, from last time, last time we met. And then we're going to go into today's lesson, which I think I'm going to try to cover just adjectives and just kind of see where that takes us. And、uh, I think that'll probably be enough for, for an hour today. So、uh, we'll see what happens. But、like、I, I think I was telling you last time, you know, I'm trying to kind of stretch this out a little bit longer just to make the content、um, not as、uh, intensive, I guess. But yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of thinking about, remember, if you remember last time I was talking about how.、Uh, Sounds like she's being abused. <laughs> Last time I was talking about how,、uh, you know, since there's only, looks like we got nine viewers right now, and、um, there was, there's actually another university Reddit Japanese class going on right now. Like, you learn Reddit through Minecraft or something like that. I'm not sure how that works exactly, but、uh, sounds interesting. I was, I've never really gotten into Minecraft, so I'm not really sure how that would work, but、um, he, he messaged me the other day because. Uh, he wanted to know like, how, why people were dropping out of his class or something like that. And I just told him like, that was totally normal. You know, the, the rate of dropout rate is about 50% for the first few weeks until it gets down to like, basically 10 to 20 people. But I think, like, I saw in the YouTube videos, I think like, maybe 30 or 40 people are watching them after the fact. So, you know, somewhere between about 25 to 50 people are kind of sticking with it, which is cool. But.、Um, Anyway, thank you as always for showing up and hanging out with me. Arigato gozaimasu. But what I think I'm going to do is, what I might do is just start making permanent videos for my YouTube channel and then kind of having these classes with, as a discussion session. I don't know. As you can see, I'm just kind of still trying to figure it out in my head. So、uh, well, I'll let you know. I'll keep you updated.、Um, so, anyway.、Uh, Let's go ahead and let's just go over the homework real quick. And.、Uh, okay. So. Alright, so.、Uh, first question. Sai shou no shitsumon wa. Shitsumon means question. Shitsumon. First, Saisho no Shitsumon. First question is describe the difference between Ichidan doshi and Godan doshi.、Uh, Ichidan doshi and Godan doshi. A lot of you had really good explanations for this.、Um, my mouse is not working for some reason. But yeah,、um, you know, Ichidan doshi is. Uh, obviously, these are two types of verbs, the two main types of verbs, and、uh, the third type being irregular verbs. But these two verbs are、um, basically the, the difference between these verbs is just the way that the verbs kind of end and conjugate. So when the verbs change to like past tense or potential tense, or not past tense, but potential form,、um, you know, different forms and tenses,、uh, the last part changes. So... Ichidan, if you remember, is just the ones that end in ru. 
and uh, all the other ones are Godan Doshi, which end in like Ku or Bu or Ru as well, if you remember, but the Ru doesn't drop, it changes um, in most instances. Or, you know, um, Mu or whatever it may be. So, uh, you know, the number five and one being that this covers five, the five sil the five sound syllables of Japanese and IUAO and the Ichidan doesn't. It only has one. So you could probably say quite a bit more about the differences, but uh, that's kind of the basic idea. Tsugi no shitsumon. Next question. What a, which of the following means cigarette or cigarettes? And the correct answer is all of them. Um, this is katakana for shigaretto. Not as commonly used, but it is correct. Uh, the most commonly used word for cigarettes is tabako. 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 And this is katakana. And this is the uh, ateji in, um, I think that's ateji. But this is kind of an interesting kanji because this means smoke, the first one, and this means grass. So it's like grass that you smoke. But they aren't pronounced normally um, that way, like tabako. That's, this is pronounced tabako, but normally these kanji wouldn't be pronounced that way. So. Um, you do see a few words like that now where, you know, it's just like the translation or the meaning of it, the only reason those kanji are being used is because they actually mean, you know, what the word is describing. So, next question, tsugi no shitsumon wa? The next question is describe the concept of okurigana, okurigana, and give a few examples. <clears throat> so, Okurigana, okurigana, if you remember, is in a verb, the hiragana, or uh, phonetic sounds that come after the kanji. So like um, kaku, to write. And I just realized my screen is kind of small, so I'm going to make it a little bigger. Um, kaku, to write. Uh, this part is the okurigana, okurigana. Or let's say, um, itadaku, itadaku, another one that ends in ku, itadaku. This means to like receive or to humbly receive. You may have heard this before when somebody says itadakimasu before they eat. That's this verb, itadaku. Um, so again, the ku is the hiragana. Remember the okurigana can also be uh, more than just one character. So um, let's see, okiru, okiru to wake up. You can see the okiru is the okurigana, and it's more than one character. And by the way, okiru is a ichidan doshi, so um, this becomes okimas instead of okirimas. Not okirimas, it becomes okimas. All right, so there's a few examples of okurigana. Tsugi wa, uh, did you watch an episode of Hajimete no Otsukai? And it uh, looks like most of you did, and there's some pretty positive feedback. Um, just kind of one of my favorite shows. or not my favorite shows, but just a really cool show, in my opinion, you know, how they do it. Uh, they follow little kids around on their first. Haji, Hajimete and Otsukai, if you remember, Otsukai is errand and, or, uh, yeah, errand and Hajimete is first. So, like, first, their first um, errand. So they follow these, like, three or four or five-year-olds around to, after their parents give them instructions to, like, go buy groceries. And, uh, you know, Japan is a really, really safe country. So... You can kind of send your kids out alone and not really worry about them getting abducted and stuff like that. It's kind of interesting. Uh, not everywhere, not always, but you know, it's just kind of definitely safer than it would be in America, for example. Then, uh, so anyway, I highly recommend that. I think I put a link out there in the in the homework. So check out Reddit, 
it's the subreddit for the link on the show. It just takes you to a website with the search field already filled out uh, for that for that TV show. It gives you a bunch of results, so you can just kind of pick an episode. Excited about the TV show I'm going to show you tonight. It's called uh, um, Hoko, uh, Hokotate, 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 The Sword and the Shield. Uh, anyway, Sugi no shitemo wa, give an example sentence using a new verb we learned in session six. So uh, this could be really any, uh, any sentence using any verb. So let's say a verb we used last time. How about oyogu? So, uh, oyogi, you could say like, watashi wa, watashi wa, oyoi da. Watashi wa oyoi da. I swim. Or, um, oh yeah, that's good enough. Watashi wa oyoi da. This is the past tense of oyogu, oyogu oyoida, oyoida. And if you wanted to say it the polite way, you would say watashi wa oyogimashita, oyogimashita, oyogimashita. Uh, and I guess that kind of answers this, the next question, which is given example sentence using a new verb in the past tense, which is what we just did. I just I swam. Remember, um, I will swim is watashi wa oyogu, watashi wa oyogu, and um, yeah, that's all we covered last time. So, and that's it. So de wa saigo de orimas, orimashita, homework, shukudai, shukudai is homework, by the way. All right, so. Um, there were some good answers on the homework last time, and I don't, I can't remember if I shared the link on it or not, or if when you're filling it out, you uh, you have you have access to the answer link if it's like right there or not. But uh, you know, it, it was a, I made it public this time so anybody could see it, and I highlighted a few of the answers in green, so you could kind of see some good example answers. And um, not to say that if yours wasn't highlighted in green, it was wrong or anything, but um, I just you know pick out a few that I think are, are good answers and use those so um, and we're we're at nine viewers now so it's looking like that may be probably our, our number they were going to be probably you know anywhere from like seven to ten viewers for the rest of the probably the class depending on how the format goes so maybe we'll uh, think about doing some some Google hangouts or we can do some like practice conversation because I think that'll be really productive Anyway, so uh, today's trip tip, what we want to talk about is uh, lodging in Japan. And uh, lodging in Japan, obviously, you know, Japan is a first world country, so, you know, you can find hotels there, really nice five-star hotels there, um, really nice, really, really nice places to stay, and, you know, very, very luxurious places. So, um, you know, you can, you can drop a lot, of, a lot of money over there if you want to, staying in some really nice places. Um, I've, called, I've always kind of been fortunate that I've always had friends there that were willing to, to put me up in their place. So most of the time when I go to Japan, I stay at other people's places and, you know, friends' houses and stuff like that. And, um, you know, Japanese people are really, uh, really open to kind of having people stay in their house and, and having guests. You know, having guests in the house is a – there's a lot of um, history and culture that that uh, is, you know, part of the – you know the customs of having people having guests in your home and stuff. So, like if you remember last time, I was telling you how it's it can be common to expect you know to have somebody in your home and allow them to smoke even if you're not a smoker. And um, you know it's just kind of a part of that emphasis that they place on you know on the importance of having guests in your home and, and treating them the right way. So again, I was fortunate to and still am fortunate to have a lot of people that I know around the country who. Are willing to put me up, which is really nice. I would I'm gonna try to meet people, and before you go, and you know, especially if you're in college and stuff, meet people. I'm, I guarantee you that you know, especially 
if you meet people in college and then go home, if or, and then they go back to Japan and like you know if they're living at their parents' house, especially their parents would be really willing to put you up there if they know that you're their their friend in America. I mean, you know they're they're gonna think that they owe you something and <clears throat> they'll be willing to put you up probably. So, um, but anyway, outside of uh, obviously like staying in people's homes and and um, you know that's not really your lodging, I wouldn't say. So, uh, you know, hotels, like I said, and a hotel in Japan is just called hoteru, 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 written in katakana. Obviously, you can hear the word that came from uh, hotel is hoteru. And uh, if you, and pretty much hotels in Japan are just like anywhere else. I mean, it's nothing really. Most of the time, you're not really taking off your shoes in hotels in Japan, so it's it's pretty westernized. Um, there's a lot of times there's like a restaurant at the top floor, restaurant and bar, restaurant and bar at the top floor. Um, so I'm trying to think if there's really anything else. Like I said, it's just pretty much it's just a hotel. There's not really a whole lot that's different about it. So um, you'll probably find that they'll be accommodating to English speakers too. You know, especially if it's in like Tokyo and stuff, there'll be English speaking uh, employees there. So. Um, but uh, the, you know the non-traditional hotel, Japanese hotel, is called a ryokan, ryokan, uh, ryokan, and those are you know very those go back way way back to the day when you know the shogun would travel with his whole entourage, like back in the medieval times, they would travel with their whole entourage like along this road through the whole country, basically like. Um, I don't. I forget the whole story behind it, but you know, something like they just take like all these hundreds of people with them or something, and it's this crazy trip that they're like month. They last like months on end, and they would always stop at these yokans and these inns. You know, these traveling inns, and um, so they're the traditional Japanese inn with the traditional tatami mat, and you know, you're sleeping on the floor, and the futons are in the closet. The futon. Futon, I should say, futon is in the closet, and you know you have uh, like the little table there that you put to the side when you sleep, and it's all—it's basically just like one room, um, you know, it's just like a single room, which I guess is kind of like some hotels, but it has usually has like a uh, a little enclave or on—I don't know, I guess it's called an enclave, but it's like a little. Place where there's usually like a scroll with con like a calligraphy scroll and then like a little flower arrangement, um, and usually I think with yokans it's like a community bath, so it's not going to be like a bath a bathroom in each room. You might have like a actually I don't even think you well it depends. Sometimes you'll have a bath in your room, sometimes you won't. Um, but you know like don't be surprised if it's if it's like a, a bath on the floor or even if you have like a toilet in your room, but then the actual showers and bath, it's really common for them to have, if you remember we were talking about last, last time the bathhouses and stuff, um, they'll have a bathhouse on the top floor of the Ryokan, so you know, if you need to take a shower, bathe, and stuff like that, it's all going to be on the, uh, on the top floor, and usually those are like the nicer ones. If it's kind of a, um, you know, there's a difference between like one that's just kind of Japanese. I mean, it's just like a Japanese hotel, and it's not really supposed to be all, you know, nice and, um, you know, traditional and kind of cool. So it's just kind of like a hotel. I mean, it's not really really high quality stuff. But uh, then there are some. They're like really out to be really nice and really traditional, and like they'll have the really nice bathroom on the top floor, and um, it'll be all kind of like nature-y and you know the, the decorations will be nice but um, anyway so those are called yokans and um, I would highly recommend you stay in them they're a lot of fun a lot really cool experience oh my gosh it's already 20 minutes so uh, I'll show you some pictures of these here in a sec but um, also if you're a young traveler in Japan you can also get hooked up in a, in a hostel there a youth hostel where you know, I think you have to be a certain age, and you have to sign up ahead of time. But it's really cheap lodging, um, and it's just like basically a room full of bunk beds where young people stay. And there's like a curfew, and um, you know, it's just cheap young living for travelers, basically. So, um, 
that's not really unique to Japan, so you can find that find out about that stuff in English on the internet anywhere. Like it's really popular in Europe, but I did do that a couple times, and I would recommend it, you know, for some cheap lodging. But uh, so back to uniquely Japanese things. Um, another thing that you can do in Japan is called a cap capuseru capuseru hotel capuseru hotel uh, or a businessman or I don't know I don't even know what it's called businessman hotel or a capsule hotel. You probably heard of capsule hotels where it's just like a little tube that you just have a bed and like a shower at the end of the hall, like a communal shower, and it's just a tube and you just sleep in the tube. And sometimes they'll have like a little TV in there. Um, you know, that's cheap cheap living. I mean, you know, if you're traveling on a cheap budget and you want to sleep a bed, basically, you know, you'll be in there and you'll be safe and, and uh, you know, out of the weather and out of the elements. And I'm not really sure how much those cost. I'm going to say maybe like anywhere from like 20 to $50 a night or something like that. I don't know. But, uh, you know, definitely a very Japanese experience. I would recommend it. And then you have a businessman hotel, which is like, Basically, just like a teeny little sliver of a room, um, you know, really small, like a bed and like a desk and a and a toilet, and it's just like packed in there. Like there's no room to walk around or anything. It's just a really small hotel. Um, and then, uh, you know, outside of that, you could they have what's called a love hotel, which or love hotel, which is really just for sex. But I guess you could stay there because you know you rent it by the hour, but it has a bed. I mean. <laughs> If that's your, if that's all you can find, I guess you could stay there. But mostly that's reserved for, you know, couples trying to um, go in and have some fun. But uh, and then there was one other thing I think I was going to talk talk about, which was um, Oh yeah, manga manga hisa or a manga cafe. Um, you know, in Japan they have basically these little places where you can go in and get like a little mini private room. It's basically just a desk, and you can pay a fee, an hourly fee, and I think sometimes do nightly fees, and basically just sit there and browse the internet, read read comic books, um, you know, get free drinks like sodas and tea and stuff like that for as long as you want, you know, so it's basically just like a little internet cafe, uh, but with private booths, you know, so um, then they'll have like reclining, nice reclining chairs and stuff, so you could sleep in there, people do sleep in there, there's actually an article on Reddit somebody posted recently about it, it was a repost, but, you know, what are you going to do, <laughs> but about, you know, how people live in there, and, you know, it's comparable to like, to rent, and, um, you know, you can get everything you need in there, I mean, there, you can just go back, I mean, as far as, like, uh, you know, sleeping, you can have a bed and internet access, and, um, you know, you can play game, you can play video games in there and just kind of do whatever. So it's, it's a nice private area, and it's a nice place to kind of go geek out if that's what, you, if that's what you're into. And it's also nice, uh, you know, there isn't, Wi-Fi isn't free in Japan like it is in America. Like, you can't just go into a Starbucks and get Wi-Fi in Japan. You have to, like, pay for it. Um, so it's a nice place to go pay for it, but also kind of have, you know, dedicated internet access, a nice computer, and a private area to do whatever you want. And um, there might also be some kind of seedy things going on in some of these places, too, as you can imagine. So just uh, keep that in mind, especially, obviously, in the bigger cities. So, um, but, yeah, so I would, but, again, another very, very Japanese thing that's very cool and it's very, very, like, you know, modern and young and, a fun experience and definitely definitely recommend um, looks like some people are wondering if lavender cat cactus you're kind of having some bad luck last time too it sounds like you're okay in fire firefox so that's good to hear um, but yeah so you know all the stuff especially the yokan and um, the uh, manga kisa Manga Kisaten. Kisaten is coffee shop, so it's like Manga Kisa. It's like a shorter, shortened version of Kisaten. Um, so I'll show you a couple of really quick pictures of uh, of those. And so, oops. so this is like a this is just Wikipedia, but uh, ryokan is this is kind of a traditional looking ryokan where um, you have, you know, 
just a room. I mean, this, there's nothing behind it. It's just a room. This, it's just like a square room. And this is actually, I don't, you don't see this as much with these Western chairs here. Uh, but you can see this is where they have the, um, there's always this little space for the artwork. And then this one has a bath in it, which is a nice, like, sliding door glass bath. This is a nice one. And then you have the table here, and you can see that the, the chairs, you know, there's, uh, there's no Western chairs in the center of the table. And, and here is where the bedding is, and at nighttime they're going to bring that out. And um, a lot of times like if you're gone during the day, like out in the evening doing something, you'll come back and they'll have made your bed out. They'll put your bed out for you. Um, and you'll leave it during the day, leave it out during the day after you slept, and they'll put it up for you, kind of depending on the place. But you can see that it's kind of got that traditional natural look. You know, a lot of times um, that's kind of what they're going for. This is going to be more common in, like, the countryside, you know, and it's going to be a more common type of room in, um, you know, in, a, in an onsen or, like, a Japanese bathhouse with, a, with the rooms. So, uh, and again, these mats are the tatami mats. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of a traditional-looking room. And then here's a ca capsule hotel. I really like this picture of a capsule hotel. It's just, like, so kind of cyberpunk, you know. It's, like, so modern and... Um, you know, just kind of bare bones, just a bed, and that's it, you know, but totally cool, totally Japanese. Um, so, yeah, I recommend checking both of those out and the uh, manga kisa. Maybe we can find a picture of a manga kisa really quick. And can I turn off my Japanese? Let's see some images. Okay, hopefully there's nothing X-rated here. So, yeah, you can see here, like, um, you know, just, like, lines. Like, here we go. So you have, you know, little private booths where people sit and, um, you know, kind of do their own little personal thing. And the walls are lined with, you know, comic books um, just everywhere. So, you know, like I said, it's mostly for comic books, but you could also browse the Internet and play video games and kind of do whatever you want, watch videos and stuff. So it's pretty cool, uh, pretty cool for geeks especially. So, um, or any really, but any really anybody that's interested in like Japanese pop culture, you'll definitely have a good time there. Definitely check it out. So, um, okay, so let's go ahead and talk about today's language lesson, and um, that is going to be um, about. First, just want to, well, I guess we kind of already talked about verbs a little bit, and, well, it's only 9.30, so. Um, let's go ahead and screen share again, and Kind of uh, ah. All right, so if you remember last time we talked about verbs and the difference between, um, you know, how verbs conjugate and the end of verbs, so like. Uh, for example, this verb, hanasu, when you, you can spot it's a godan doshi, it's, a, it's the five column verb because uh, it ends in a su, or it doesn't end in a ru. So the only verbs that, that uh, conjugate that specific way are the ones that end in ru, like taberu. And... Uh, Remember with those, a lot of times what happens when you conjugate it to something, the root just drops, and um, to make it like, for example, here, you just the root drops and it becomes ta. So taberu becomes tabeta, taberu becomes tabeta, or taberu becomes tabemashita. Um, and then you have all the other godan doshi, which are you know tsu, they can end in su, tsu, nu, bu, ku, whatever, and oru. And those all conjugate um, a little bit different from each other and from 
uh, the, the Ichidan Doshi. So just remember that you're going to have to go through and find each, you know, the ending, the Okudigana for each, the, each type of Okudigana, like all these, and figure out how they conjugate to whatever you're trying to say. So, you know, if you're trying to make it a potential, or if you're trying to make it a, a passive, or if you're trying to make it, um, you know, a te form, or whatever it might be, past tense, that it's always going to be a little bit different for each one. So you need to just kind of start getting, getting uh, just start starting to memorize those. So, so here's some more verbs that we learn. Remember, oyogi mashita, oyogu is to swim. Wakaru is to understand or to know. Kao, to buy. Nobiru, to grow to, or to get long. Kuru. And remember, kuru and uh, sudu right here, these are irregular verbs that uh, are really, really common common verbs that you need to know and need to learn. Um, you know, kuru, it's just to come and like to come somewhere to, to go or come, to go and come. Um, obviously, that's a really commonly used word. And sudu is, if you remember, just kind of like that to do verb. It just means to do. So it has a lot of usages. Like it can be useful for a second, you know, a, a non-native Japanese speaker because if you don't know how to say something um, or describe yourself, but you want to talk about a verb, you can just point at something and say like sudo or some form of sudo and people can kind of get what you're saying. And also remember that a lot of times when you have uh, a Chinese kanji or kanji that's a, a compound character, um, two kanji together, and you want to make it into a verb form, then you just add sudo on the end of it. Okay, so just remember that if you see like two, you know, two Chinese characters or two kanji, uh, and then sudo, it's the verb to do that that thing. Again, this one is benkyo. Okay, so um, later on, you know, further down the line, we're going to talk a lot more about how different verbs conjugate and uh, you know how how to change verbs to do different things. So um, just keep in mind that, you know, we are going to go over that later. But it's just kind of, you know, it's just a little bit more advanced before we introduce uh, the other basic parts of speech. So uh, on that note, we're going to talk today about adjectives or uh, I guess I'll type it down here. Keioshi. Kyoshi is adjective, and um, that's you know a grammatical term, so don't really too worry too much about that. But that's how you say adjective in Japanese. And um, so there's two types of Jap uh, adjectives in in Japanese, and that's ikeoshi and nakeoshi. So basically, what that means is that the word ends in either e or na. So, for example, the word nagai, which means long, and mijikai, which means short. Nagai is long, and mijikai is short. You can see that these both end in e. Um, and then, a couple examples of uh, a na keoshi are hen na, hen na, which means straight, uh, strange or weird, hen na, or jōzu na, jōzu na, which means uh, good at something. And this is kind of an interesting kanji because it's like this means up and this means hand, so it's kind of you can see how it means like good or like skillful or you know good at doing something. Um, and actually, the opposite of that, as you might guess, is hita, hitana. Uh, downhand, downhand. So, um, so you can see that you know it's pretty simple. Uh, the adjectives are e keoshi and non adjectives not keoshi. And really, the reason why. You need to know this difference, obviously, other than just kind of how to pronounce or how to say the word and how to read the word, is again just like the verbs, uh, the end of it. And I'm, you know, I'm not sure if okurigana 
is how you would describe these or not, like with words. Um, it might be, but it's just how, again, when you change the word to be like uh, a ne negation or, you know, not long or not short or uh, an affirmation or a past tense or something like that, just like with the verbs, uh, you know, this is the part that changes and not this part. So the kanji doesn't change, the kanji pronunciation, the kanji pronunciation doesn't change, only the uh, hiragana part changes, okay? So, so quickly, like, um, it's, it's, it's a lot easier than, than the verse because there's only two ways that they can change. And uh, remember, if you remember with the verbs, it can be so many, but with, with um, adjectives, it's only either e or not. So um, adjectives are pretty easy. And so let's just say you want to change it to, uh, let's see, what do we do with verbs? Past tense. So let's say we want to uh, change the past tense from nagai, from long to was long. Nagakatta. Nagakatta. <coughs> Nagakatta. So you can see that the E completely drops and it changes to katta. Nagakatta. Okay, and so the exact same here, instead of mijikai, it's mijikakatta, 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 okay, so just drop the E and add katta, and um, let's see, present tense and future tense is just the uh, that base form, or what I call the base form of the, the adjective, which is e. So nagai, it is long. Um, I don't know, really. I guess would you ever say like it will be long? I mean, I think really in that sense, you're changing this. You're 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 going to be making more of a like a sentence in that instance. So you're not really changing just the word. You're actually kind of going to be adding some other words onto that word. Uh, so we won't talk about that, but really, um, all you need to know at this point is just, you know, nagai and nagakatta. And then when you want to talk about na adjective, um, you drop the na and say datta. En datta. En datta. Jōzu datta. Jōzu datta. And remember, this small tsu here means that we double pronounce this T, or hold hold the T, or, or I'm sorry, hold the uh, hold the A sound after the da. So da 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 instead of da da, it's da da. Instead of da da, it's da da. So hen da da, and jōzu da da. And if you can guess here, hita da da, hita da da. Okay, so that's how you make uh, the ver or the adjectives past tense. And uh, just check and chat real quick to see if anybody's saying anything kind of quiet in there. So that's how you make uh, adjectives. Are those so? Those are the two types of adjectives: the e koshi and na koshi. And uh, you know, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, fortunately. So. Um, there are a f there are quite a few um, you know other obviously there are a lot of other things you can talk about with with adjectives like you know changing it to to negative and stuff like that but for now we'll just kind of stick with that just one way to change it from present tense to past tense and. Uh, you know, just real quickly, if you want to, if you want to say it politely, you know, let's say if you want to make this a sentence, like let's say what's long, um, you could just say, um, I guess something that you guys know, like watashi no kami, or maybe well, you don't know this, but kami no ke. So, means hair. So, my hair 
is long. Watashi no kami no ke wa nagai. So yeah, you know, just basic sentence, and then if you wanted to like, make a play, watashi no kami no ke wa nagai des. Nagai des. That's the, how you end the sentence, is with des. Politely. So, uh, just colloquial is just end it with nagai. And that's a complete sentence right there. Watashi no kami no ke wa nagai. And uh, obviously you can change that to mijikai if your hair is short. Not a big surprise there. Watashi no kami no ke, kami no ke wa mijikai. All right. So um, let's go ahead and move on to uh, nouns, which and the, and the reason why is because nouns are easy once you know adjectives because nouns are treated just like na keioshi. So basically, the base form of uh, a noun is with a na on the end of it. And a, Jap a Japanese person, and even maybe a lot of students of Japanese, um, advanced students of Japanese, might question describing it this way. Um, you may try to describe this to a Japanese person, they would have no idea what you're talking about. Actually, when I talked to my wife about the last this lesson, the e keioshi and na keioshi, um, she didn't had never heard of that way to describe it before, and we looked it up on Wikipedia, and it was right there. And, um, you know, that's definitely a way to Japanese people will describe it in linguistic circles, academic circles, but uh, she had never really heard of that. So uh, it is there, but it's not like again a theme that I'm kind of repeating over and over again. These are linguistic terms, and people who study languages will know what we're talking about here. But that's what we're doing. So, uh, so yeah, you know, gakusei. A lot of people wouldn't say that you, and honestly, I'm not really even sure, technically speaking, if sometimes you would write it with a na, I know that, but um, like if you want to say like it's in its base form, um, you know, I don't know if you would ever write it with a na, but I just want to teach it to you this way because if you think of it like this, in the same way that you think of a na adjective or a na keioshi, then uh, it's easy to understand in that. When you change it to, uh, you know, negation or a past tense or something like that, it changes the exact same way. So, can you guess like how you would this this kanji right here is person. So, hito. So if you were to say if you were to say in the middle of a sentence, obviously or something, whatever whatever hito, like if you're saying like uh, ano hito, ano hito, that person, like if you're asking. That person, anohito, anohito, or anohito desu ka, or anohito ka, that person, is it that person? Um, you know, let's say you're talking about somebody who has funny hair, is it, and your friend's describing it, and you're like, who is it? Is it, or you're like, is it that person, or something like that, whatever. Um, you know, this is the, this is the present tense, but if you are have already left, and you're talking about a person that, you know, was around you a few minutes ago that you're not there anymore, you, it's changed the same way to datta. So if you remember, we just changed uh, jōzu to jōzu datta, or heta to heta datta. Hito changes to hito datta. And same thing with this word is uh, student, gakusei. Ano gakusei datta. It was that. It was that student. It was that student. Ano gakusei datta. So, whereas ano gakusei is just that student. All right. So remember, it, it conjugates or changes, um, just like a na adjective. And uh, just another quick example: daigaku means college, and um, that is the exact same way. Again, it's just a noun and also, keep in mind that pronouns do the exact same thing. So, um, but yeah, anyway, so like gakko, gakko datta. Boku no gakko datta, daigaku datta. Boku no daigaku datta. Sorry, I think I said gakko a couple times. This is actually daigaku, or college. 
Gakko is just school. Um, hopefully you're seeing that these two kanjis are the same and uh, they mean learn or to study and that's why obviously they're in words that have to do with school and, and students and things like that. So, boku no daigaku datta. So like this is an affirmative saying, statement, you're saying, somebody asks like, uh, you know, what school won the championship last year and you say, oh, it was my school. Watashi no daigaku datta. Boku no daigaku, this is boku. Boku no daigaku datta. Boku no daigaku datta. All right, so uh, again, if you wanted to do a pronoun like um, your name, let's say John Smith, John John Smith, John Smith, John Smith datta. It was John Smith. John Smith datta. Or it was. Tanaka Megumi. Tanaka Megumi. Datta. Or you could say Tanuki Megumi san datta. Tanu Tanaka being, I just said Tanuki instead of Tanaka. <laughs> Tanaka being a very common uh, family name, and uh, Megumi being a name that we've already learned here in this class, and a common female first name. So Tanaka Megumi san datta. It was Megumi Tanaka. Uh, if you remember, I don't know if I if I mentioned this, but I think I did. But uh, Japanese names are written last name first, first name last. So they don't write when you when you're talking about someone. And normally when you're talking about someone, you know that you don't know or that you're, um, you know, not it's not in your circle of friends. Uh, you want to say their full name, and which is a little bit different from America. I mean, America, you can obviously say people's full names, but it's not like it's. Not, I want to say it's like almost impolite not to do it. It's just not really the norm. So, you know, just just keep that in mind that you know that it's first name last, and or last name first, and first name last, and uh, you say people's full name a lot of times. So, uh, yeah, so. So today we got about ten minutes left, and um, so just kind of want to recap. If you recall, we talked about e keoshi, na keoshi, adjectives, na adjectives, and how those are the only two types of adjectives. <coughs> and um, how um, the, when you change them to different things that we're and we're going to talk more a lot more about you know different ways that they can change in the in the future but um, just we just did a basic uh, how they change to just past tense and if you remember e adjectives like nagai is long and to change it to past tense is nagakatta and mijikai mijikakatta and then na actually it's kind of funny because one this this verb ara. <coughs> oh wait, no, that's that's not even active, so it doesn't doesn't matter for this lesson. So never mind. But well, I might as well tell you since I brought it up. But there's just one verb <coughs> in Japanese called ara ta. Ara tamarana. Ara tamar. Ara tamaru. Ara tamaru. And I don't even. I think it means like to renew. Ara tamaru. Ara tamaru. Yeah, to be renewed, <clears throat> or aratameru. And uh, I was just thinking about one day how you can make it uh, in the past tense, in a potential past tense, and it's aratamaranakatara. <laughs> so it's like, I'm sorry, I'm such a, I'm such a language nerd, but... Um, it's just funny how with Japanese, you know, the, the the vowel sound system is so basic that like, and a lot of times you'll just get repeat vowels after each other. So it's like all ah sounds. So ara ara nakatara na is all like ah 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 ah, ah but it's actually like one kind of sentence, which is kind of funny. I thought anyway, I was thinking about that one day. I told my wife that, and she's like, "You're stupid," but. 
anyway. <laughs> that actually means um, if it is re renewed is what that means. But or if it if it was renewed, it's past tense potential. Anyway, so and then uh, we talked about you know not adjectives how like henna becomes henda da and you can kind of see there is a little bit of a similarity in that both 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 of them end in the ta the double t a so henda ta nagakatta so they both end with that same uh, ta and uh, and then we talked about pronouns and nouns and about how they're basically treated the same as um, na keoshi or vice versa. You could say na keoshi are treated that, uh, the same as, as nouns and pronouns. And, and that, you know, so they change when you're changing, like, for example, past tense, what we study today, uh, you just add the data on the end of it. So, like, uh, noun is, a noun is, uh, just you just add data on the end of it to make it past tense. So, um, that is pretty much all I was going to talk about today. Um, maybe a little bit shorter today, a few minutes, but I did want to share with you um, a really, really cool Japanese show, which there are like a never ending list of, so hopefully you look forward to that. You know, I don't even watch TV in America, I don't have a TV, I have my TV hooked up to my computer. Um, I cannot stand American television, it makes me want to stab my eyeballs out because it's just so fake and lame and run by corporate shills and the advertisement, I just ugh, I can't stand it. The only thing I can really stand is like live sports. Um, and actually I enjoy, I enjoy that. So, um, but you know, outside of that, like I can't, I can't stand it at all. But Japanese television uh, is actually really, really well produced in my opinion. And there's a lot of really good there's a lot of really dumb shows out there. Like I don't really, I'm not really into the Japanese drama and like Japanese dramatic, um, you know, fictional movies and television. Like, is if you grew up with Hollywood, like you probably won't like it very much. It's definitely got its a very unique um, style to it, and it's definitely like not the style of American, you know, fictional drama and stuff. So. Um, you know, you can check that out, but most of the stuff that I'm going to be recommending is more of like uh, comedy shows or almost like documentary style shows where um, I think the Japanese television style really shines where uh, they have, well, you'll see. But anyway, on the, the one I want to share with you today, um, it's called Hokotate, and, which means sword and shield. And it's basically like a juxtaposition show where they take um, two things, or two, usually two businesses that would be in complete, you know, competition with each other, and spend an hour-long show on um, building up to like, you know, this display of them going against each other. So, for example, like. It'll be like a, a company that makes like a wrecking ball and a wrecking ball and a crane versus like a company that makes like super strong bulletproof glass. And they'll like drop this huge ball onto this glass and try to break it. And, you know, or they'll like take a, a, drill, a drill company and like a metal sheet company or like a safe company and try to have the drill drill through a safe and see who, which company wins. And, um, or like they'll have a safe company and like a locks like the best locksmith in the country or like a really good locksmith to try to crack a safe or something like that. Um, so it's really really cool and really entertaining and um, you know in American television and probably any kind of television you know they spend a lot of times with like reality television especially which is really what this is. I mean it's reality television, uh, but don't let that dissuade you. It's not like American reality television, but uh, if you you know, a lot of times the format is like, okay, spend 50 minutes of an hour building up to what's going to happen and just kind of like showing the same different angles of the same things and just kind of like a celebrity panel talking about it. But the way that they do it in Japan, it's not like super repetitive and basically just sitting there wasting 50 minutes for you to watch advertisements, which I feel like a lot of times in America it is. It's just so lame and like, you know, they, they get people's reaction and time it 
and I'm sitting here harping on American television I'll stop uh, it's you know it's just a lot more well produced in my opinion so give it a shot give it a chance um, so anyway uh, I'll put a link out and this is just a common Japanese um, video website there might even be Chinese actually mostly they're Chinese but this is going to be a link that I just posted in chat uh, where, again, where it's just a pre-searched, the website's already been searched for you, and the first eight results there are, uh, I think, um, results for that. Or are, are all those results, not the first eight, but the whole, you yeah, know, the whole first results are that show. And this will really give you a kind of, this will really kind of give you an idea of the, the format of a lot of Japanese tele reality television where, you have a celebrity panel, and uh, celebrities work a lot different in Japan, and we'll talk about that another time. But um, this will get you an idea of like how they cut into like the content, and then they cut back to the the celebrities talking about it. So uh, definitely check that out. I highly recommend the show. It's really cool, and um, you know I think you'll really enjoy it. And it might be the Japanese. Uh, I, I recommend it because you know the Japanese is going to be probably way too advanced for a lot of you, but that being said, there's going to be a lot of Japanese written on the screen that you can try to read, and you can pretty much follow the story, uh, you know, without understanding Japanese. So, enjoy the show, and hopefully, you can get some time to watch it. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in this week. And uh, we will see you next week. Minasan, arigatou gozaimasu. Eto, mata laishu, gambatte kudasai.